So uh, be sure to sign up. Uh, they've got the, the card here, and uh, be sure to take your card by the, uh, the table. And, and I, uh, one of you in the third row, I believe in a blue sweater, is, let's see, right in there, one of you guys has a card in your packet, I believe, that says winner. Somewhere in that row, you guys. Somebody has a winner. Uh, in your little backpack, we randomly selected a, a seat while you were out. So pick up your backpack and reach inside and what are they the zipper. A $50 Disney gift card. There you go. And uh, I'll make duplicates of that card uh, for $25 that you can redeem at the uh, first All right, so uh, let me take a moment and introduce to you uh, Evan Lowell. Uh, Evan is with uh, Logos uh, Bible Software. And uh, we already had the sermon run through uh, earlier today, but uh, this is a great uh, software, a great tool for you uh, as you prepare your sermons, and he's going to share a little bit more about that, uh, and also for uh, your small groups ministry and, uh, and so forth. So without further ado, if you would, give a nice warm welcome to Evan Wolf. Let me see a quick show of hands. How many of you can do a basic online Google search? 
Now, keep your hands up, keep them up. I want you to look around. If there's anyone not raising their hand around you, I want you to lay hands on them and pray for them. It's okay, my bad brothers, it'll be okay, it's fine. Um, listen, uh, I'm a Presbyterian, so you know, that's a little awkward in our service as well. Uh, don't need to pick on Baptist, but anyway. Logos is that easy to use. If you can use a Google, if you can do a Google search, you can use Logos. All we have to do is simply type in a passage or a topic and click go. A passage, a topic, click go. It's that simple. It's that easy to get started. So here, we're going to take a look at Acts chapter 4 today. So all I'm going to do is type in Acts 4 and see Logos intuitively picked up on the passage that I'm looking for. It's the passage where Peter and John are arrested for preaching the gospel, turning the world upside down, and they're taken before the Sanhedrin. So we're going to dig in a little bit more on that. So I've got the passage, I click go, and boom. In a couple of seconds, Logos just went into my entire library and brought back every single book that has anything to do with Acts chapter 4. And not only that, but it organized it all in a nice neat fashion right here in front of me. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to come back to this and walk through a little bit more of that in just a minute. In the upper middle box here, this is where your biblical text is going to appear. Now, I've got the ESV translation up. You can actually choose and select which translation you like and trust and use the most to show up first here. Now, the nice thing about the way this works is you also can have as many translations open at the same time as you want. And all you have to do is just click on these tabs at the top to scroll between the different translations. Now, in the box directly below that, it's on the, uh, in the lower middle box, is the commentary of the text. Now, depending on the package you have, the different libraries are going to come with different sets of commentaries. Again, you can actually prioritize which one you want to show up first here when you do your searches. Now, the nice thing about the way these two boxes interact is watch what happens in the lower middle commentary box as I scroll through the biblical text. You see, it's actually going to scroll with me and stay with me, so I don't lose my place. And you'll notice also that we can actually fully highlight, mark up the text, draw boxes around words. This is fully customizable, everything in Logos, just like your physical books and Bibles are. Okay? Now, say you want to quickly take a look at the Greek or the Hebrew in the biblical text that you're looking at, but you don't want to change anything else that's going on around the way your screen is set up here. Watch what happens in the, top, in the far right-hand bar, we call it the information bar, as I hover my mouse over the word fill. You see, in just a couple of seconds, Logos just did a few hours worth of Bible word study information for me in the Greek, and it's presented it for me in a nice, neat fashion. So I can very quickly see the English definition. I can see the original language definitions from my lexicons. Again, these resources, depending on the package that you have gotten, and uh, you can even see the different English translations where that particular word rendering is used. And then we even get more word information about the particular Greek word where it's rooted in. So we can see the manuscript word. We can see the lemma. We can see the morphology, the parsing, all of that good stuff. We can even hear the pronunciation. Check this out. And you don't check it out. <laughs> OK. Well, anyway, you can hear the pronunciation there if my audio is working. But anyway, we even have the morphology here. So, Say, for instance, you're blanking on your seminary days, you don't remember your Greek studies, or if you're in here and you never even took Greek class, Logos is great with the original language because it presents information in such a way where you don't have to have formal training to benefit from it, which is great. I'm actually taking Greek one myself, and so Logos has been my best friend for the last month. Um, so uh, watch what happens here when I hover over the word passive and the morphology. This is letting me know that for the, the, the word filled in the Greek, it's being used in the passive tense. Why does that matter? Why is that important? What kind of punch does that give to the text here in Acts chapter 4? Well, when a verb is used in the passive tense, that means that the subject is actually being acted upon. He's not doing the acting. And when we go to the text and realize what's happening, is that Peter is about to go stand before the Sanhedrin, and it says he was filled with the Holy Spirit. It's important to say that Peter, nor do we, fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit. We don't grab our bootstraps and pull them up real tight and say, I've got the courage to go and preach the gospel in a world that is hostile to it. No, God is the one who comes and does the filling of Peter. God is the one who does the filling of us with the Holy Spirit so that we can go out and share the gospel and do His work. Amen? You guys alive out there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, as we come back, if we want to go even deeper into that particular Greek word and see maybe more instances in Scripture where it's used, all we have to do is simply right-click on the word, and I'm going to select Bible Word Study, 
and instantly Logos is going to bring up our Bible word study tool. Now this is incredible, again, because we see all of our lexicon definitions and pronunciation and all of that, but this beautiful color wheel is going to show me that for whatever translation I want to look at, it's going to show me all of the instances in Scripture where this word pimpling is used, and it's also going to show me the different ways in which it's translated. So, if I want to see all the places in the Greek New Testament where the word pimpling is translated as filled, all I do is click on the section of the wheel, and bam, you've got all 18 instances in the Greek New Testament where that word is used in that way. And as we scroll down, you can even get the Septuagint information to draw corollaries between the Greek and the Hebrew with your own New Testament comparisons. Root words, all different kinds of stuff right here at the click of the button. When you're done, just get rid of it, and we're right back where we started here. Okay? So one of the nice things is you can do all of this great in-depth study. You're not losing your place with anything that you were looking at. Now, another great new tool to Logo 6 that I want to show you really quick is our inline search. Now, say, for instance, you've done this great, broad, sweeping search where you've got all these resources open, but you want to search within one particular resource without changing the layout of anything else around you. With the inline search, we can do that. So this text is talking about Peter being filled with the Holy Spirit. So say I want to click on the inline search, this search icon right here in the biblical text box. And you can do this in any resource. And I want to see all the places where someone or something is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I can just type in a phrase near the word fill, hit enter, and with the inline search, literally in a second, it's going to show me all of the different passages where someone or something is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, could you imagine how helpful this would be in your sermon prep for just saving some time? You can do some really dynamic searching here. And when you're done, again, click the X, click the back arrow, and we're right back where we were in our Acts chapter 4 passage. Now, I'm going to come back over to the far left-hand side, and I'm just going to survey through some of the different tools and features and resources that you're going to have available to you. We'll start here with the commentaries. Again, like I said, depending on the package you have, you're going to have a host of different commentary sets available to you. If you want to open up another one, all you do is just simply click on the one you want to open, and it's going to automatically open up on a new tab in your lower middle commentary box. We're going to have all these cross-references from the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge, and the nice thing is you don't have to look through all the pages of your Bible looking at all these little subscript references anymore. You just hover your mouse over any reference you want to look at, and it automatically instantly pops out right there. Now, as we look at this Psalm 1822 reference, that brings me to another tool I want to show you that's new. And it's an example of different interactive media resources that we're adding into our program. So, uh, it's called the Psalm Explorer. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Many of our other resources are just text, right? It's kind of stagnant. It's something you still have to read through to get information from. But we're integrating all kinds of interactive media that's going to be more stimulating and engaging for you and not just a book. So this is an example of one of those. It's called the Psalm Explorer. So it automatically breaks out all the psalms by genre on these, good look, these beautiful looking bows. Each the size of the bow corresponds to the length of the psalm. Now, I can do some pretty dynamic filtering with this as well. So say we're studying or we're going to be teaching on the book of 1st or 2nd Samuel or the life of David, something like that. And we want to actually look at all the psalms that David wrote. Well, I can click on David here and it's going to automatically filter all the psalms that David wrote. If I want to go even further and say, show me all the songs that David wrote where he talks about God's faithfulness, we can do that filter. And as we close this, you can see, broken out by genre, we can see all the songs David wrote where he talks about the idea of God's faithfulness. And what is striking about this instantly is that the majority of the songs that David talks about God's faithfulness in are lamenting songs, which means his circumstances are awful. And we can click on any one of these bubbles, let's say Psalm 69, and it's going to go ahead and show us the text of the psalm. So we can look at it, we can look at the Hebrew next to it if we want to, we can see the parallelism for the poetic structure of the psalm, and then we can even add what's called the chiastic structure, which just adds these uh, titles to the, to the psalm that's going to help us see what's the important point of each different section throughout the psalm. So again, very quickly digging through the psalms, in just a couple of seconds here. I just want to quickly show you another piece of interactive media that just helps help show you the dynamic things Logos is doing. We have another tool called the Before and After for Biblical Sites. This is incredible for yourself or people you're teaching or if you have a family and kids at home that are younger and you want to engage them in the scriptures. Watch this. This is the uh, theater at Ephesus. This is what it looks like in modern day today. What did it look like in biblical times? Well, we can just simply swipe our screen over and we can instantly see, well, this is what it would have looked like thousands of years ago back in Ephesus. And we can just slide this back and forth to see 
the comparison between the two. So again, just an example of the dynamic interactive media that we're adding into our program here. Now as we keep scrolling down the left, I'll just show you a few more things. Ancient literature is a new tool to Logo 6. It's incredible because it would behoove us to really consult what the voices of Father's past would have to say uh, about the passage that we're looking at. So what this section does is it automatically draws out every single piece of apostolic father literature, uh, early church father literature, even literature from the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Pseudepigrapha, other manuscripts that you may want to reference and compare for uh, textual criticism. You're going to have all of that at the click of a button away right here in the ancient literature section. Next is one of my personal favorite tools that's new to Logo 6. It's called Cultural Concepts. Now, most of you know that understanding culturally what's going on in the context of the scripture is foundational to making the correct applications and teaching it and understanding it rightly. And so what this section does is it automatically identifies all of the different cultural concepts that could be occurring in the specific passage that we searched for. And then it's actually bringing every resource in my library that talks about that concept right here in front of me. So that at the click of a button, I can see what the significance of names and naming was scripturally over you know, 2,000 years ago. It's going to be important for helping us gain a more deep understanding of the passage we're looking at. Now we're also going to help bring you other types of visual things and uh, things that are designed to help enhance and enrich our knowledge of the text as we read it. One of those is going to be biblical people. So there's over 3,600 people that appear in the Bible, and one of those groups appears here in Acts chapter 4. It's called the Sanhedrin. Well, the reality is most of the time when you're teaching this passage to people, they have no clue what the Sanhedrin is or how to pronounce it. So what we can do is click on this image, and it's going to give us an explanation of what it is, but it's also going to give us this beautiful image that we can put up on a Sunday morning when we're preaching and teaching, and it's going to help our audience gain a greater and deeper visual understanding of what's going on in the text. So that we understand that in Acts 4 8, when it said Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, we can understand that he was literally standing in the center of 71 of the highest ranking officials of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And there were students who were learning how to be religious behind them, so they're completely surrounded, and they're being told, we're going to kill you if you don't stop preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Put yourself in those shoes. Put your audience in those shoes. Now we can understand why uh, Peter had to be filled with the Holy Spirit and why we, particularly in the day and age that we live in now, by the head, need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to go out into the world. Now, as we go back, we'll just uh, close that. And one other thing that I want to show you that's very helpful for delivering insights you're gaining as you're using Logos in your study, you add these in to your base package that you get, and they can go right in. So when you're searching in Logos, they're going to automatically show up. So say we've got a good Spurgeon sermon here, and we want to open that sermon, and you'll notice it opens up on a new tab right here in the lower little commentary box. And say I find a quote that I really want to present with or send out on social media to share with people. Well, all I've got to do is simply highlight it. I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to select visual copy, and instantly Lotus creates this beautiful looking professional pre-formatted slide. If you have a big name person like Spurgeon, we're going to have a picture of him in the background. You've got the quote, you've got the author of the quote. And the great thing about this is all we've got to do is simply right click, send it over to PowerPoint or Keynote or Proclaim, whatever you're presenting with, and it drops right in and you're ready to go. If you want to share it on Facebook or Twitter, send it out an email, just click one of these icons in the top right, and you're ready to go. So again, Lotus is very quickly, in a short amount of time, not only helping you find insights in the biblical text, but also deliver those insights quickly and professionally to the people you're teaching to. All right? Now, two more things I want to show you really quick. Say so you want to go back to your church history days. We talked a little bit about that this evening. And you're going to be teaching on something, or you're going to be teaching a, a class in your church to your leaders about church history. You need to brush up on some of that stuff. The timeline feature is something that took us four years to build. It's got over 8,000 points of both biblical and secular data, and we can actually search it. So, say for instance, I want to look at the life of C.S. Lewis. Well, I can type that in, hit enter, and then I'm going to fit this to show all the matching events, and it's instantly going to take me to the point in history and show me surrounding events uh, that pertain to C.S. Lewis's life. But all of your resources in your library are totally engaged with what you're doing in the timeline. So if I click on this portion right here, and I want to go to where it says uh, C.S. Lewis converts to Christianity, 
I just click on that section, and all of these articles are going to be things I have in my library, and I just click on it, and it automatically opens up to that spot and that resource. So again, this is a tool that's going to help you uh, dive in to scripturally and in church history what's going on. When we're done with it, we exit out. And then the last thing I want to show you here is a tool called the Media Browser. This is great because say you're going to be um, teaching through the Book of Acts and you want some media to, on your projector screen on Sunday mornings when you're teaching or when you have your slides going up, you want some media to go on the background. Well, all you've got to do is come to this media uh, browser and search for the Book of Acts and we'll hit enter on that and instantly Lois is going to come up with all different kinds of backgrounds and things we can use to put scripture on. We can use them as introductory slides for our teaching. And then again, all you've got to do is right click on the one you want to use and drop it right in the PowerPoint. So again, not just giving you tools to help you study the word more deeply, but also tools that are going to help you deliver those insights in a quick and professional manner. So as we close this out and go back to that home page, you can see we just did an immense, an immense amount of Bible study in just a few minutes using Logos. And we also helped you deliver those insights to the people that you're going to be teaching to in just a few minutes. And it all started just by simply typing in a passage and clicking go. It was that easy. You didn't have to do anything else. Straight out of the box, when you get it, it will do this for you. Okay? Now, as I finish up here, because I know you guys, uh, I'm the only thing standing between you and dinner right now. Okay? <laughs> no, you're not. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm just going to walk through a couple of quick closing notes here. Uh, Logos also works on your mobile devices. So what's really incredible about Logos is that it doesn't just work on your computer in your office, but it also works on your, uh, your iPad, your iPhone, any Android devices or Windows devices you have, and all of those notes, highlights, markups you make on your computer in your office, those are going to show up across all of your devices. So when you are laying in bed Saturday night and you might have your iPad in your lap and you want to review your sermon notes and markups, you've got them right there on your iPad. Okay? So Logos is going to go with you everywhere that you go. Now, we have many different what we call base packages. They're just different library sizes. Uh, but I'm going to highlight four of those based on the crowd that's here today of what I think are the best fits depending on where you're at and what your budget is. Now, the first one is the Bold Library. Very simply put, if you want to be able to do everything I showed in the presentation today, feature-wise, you need to at least minimum start in the Bold package. The next one up is Platinum. This one is more geared towards if you're a student, if you're going to be interacting with the languages at all, if you want some more Old Testament resources, maybe you're teaching occasionally, then Platinum is where you need to be. If you are a pastor and you're teaching or preaching on a regular basis, then Diamond is where you need to be. And then lastly, if you're just a full-blown theologian, maybe you're writing books, you're doing doctoral work, then the Portfolio Library is the one that I would recommend for you. Now, a couple of quick reminders. Logos is a lifetime license, which means this isn't the eternal cable bill that's going to follow you everywhere you go. All right? You're going to buy this, and you're going to own it for the rest of your life. And the good news is, when you get to the end of your life, you can actually will this on to your kids, too, and they can have it for the rest of their life. So this can become a legacy library for you and your family. Okay? You're also going to get a 30-day money-back guarantee because we believe in our products so much. Great customer service. Get this. When you call in to get help, you'll actually talk to a real person, and they're going to speak English, too. <laughs> and then we've got a real online training to help teach you how to use what you've just gotten. And lastly, we've got a conference-only discount. What I mean when I say conference-only, when this conference is over at 4 o'clock on Friday, the discount is no more. And we don't offer a discount like we do at an event like this anywhere else. This is the only place you can get it. You can't go online. You can't call in. So please, make sure you come and see me at the table and check out which library is best fit for you. And I'm going to leave the last word with this. Isaiah 40, verse 8, it says that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. The reality is we're all spending our money and our time and our resources in all different kinds of ways on all different kinds of things. And I want to be bold enough to challenge us today to invest in your study of the one thing that's going to last forever. Invest in your study of the Word of God and not only let you be blessed by it, but your church and your ministry as well. Thank you guys so much for your time.
like it's like what we tell people in coaching. Hey, it's not a fit. Uh, then, you know, it's not a fit. We understand that. Uh, some of you may have even heard Nelson.